Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. And I'm excited because today's Thursday and in a couple of days we'll have an opportunity to bless our community through Serve Our Schools. And, and I hope and pray that you're as excited about that, that you're praying for that, that maybe you're participating if you're able, because uh, we'd love for you to come on down and help us beautify and fix up the schools of Lake Havasu City. And, and we were actually doing this in Parker as well. So uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, it's not too late. Sign up on our website and say, hey, I'll be there and I'll show up and I will serve our schools. Hey, today we're looking at a story in Mark chapter 10, which honestly, I absolutely love and grieve at the same time. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole story to you, but uh, have you ever imagined meeting Jesus face to face? I, I mean, if you're a follower, of, oh, actually, whether you're a follower or not, you're going to meet him face to face one day, and hopefully it'll be a savior and not his judge. But uh, have you ever imagined what it'd be like today just to sit down and have a conversation with Jesus? See, most of us think it would be wonderful and we'd have a lot of questions we'd want to ask and things like that. But, but the truth is it may not turn out the way that we think. Because this is a story of a, of a young man who came to Jesus with a question. Uh, the Bible tells us that he was a, a, a man who was well off. And, and he came and he said, Master, what must I do to receive eternal life? Now, that's a question a lot of us ask. We want to know, how are we going to be saved? How do we get to heaven when we die? And, that, and that's what he asked. And Jesus answered him the classic Old Testament answer. Obey the commandments. Obey the commandments. And, and this young man said, I've been obeying the commandments. And in other words, he acknowledged the emptiness of religion. Look, you can be as religious uh, as you want to be. You can be religious all day long, all week long, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You can be religious, and it's not going to meet your need. There's more to it than that. And, and he acknowledged that when he said, I've been keeping the commandments. And Jesus looked at him, had compassion on him, and said, you lack one thing. Sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and come follow me. Jesus invited him to come follow him because that's where eternal life is going to be found. Now, Jesus threw in the sell, sell the possessions part because he was rich. And in fact, the Bible says that, that he went away sad from Jesus because he had great wealth. In other words, he loved his money more than he loved Jesus. Now, let me just clarify a couple of things. First of all, salvation is by grace and grace alone. We ask Jesus to save us and he saves us. It is that simple. Uh, you know, it's not because we're religious. It's not because we sell our possessions and give them to the poor. It's because we believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world. We believe that he died on the cross to pay for our sins, was raised from the dead, and we've made a commitment to follow Jesus with our lives. So that's, that's the grace. We receive that forgiveness of sins because we call on the name of Jesus to save us. Um, but uh, if Jesus is Lord, then you follow him. If he's your master, you follow him. And Jesus was inviting this young man to follow him. He said, come on, be one of my followers. But you got to let go of all that stuff that you have that's getting in the way. So let me ask you this question. And, and I honestly, I kind of hope it haunts you beyond just this morning when you're watching this. What is it that you will not give up for Jesus? What will you not let go of for Jesus? Are you like this young man and it's your money that gets in the way? Uh, it may be, uh, maybe it's your lifestyle. Promiscuity, pornography, lust is just dominating your, your life and you're not willing to, to take hold of purity for Jesus. Maybe it's your addiction of drugs or alcohol. Maybe it's your pride. Maybe it's your politics. Maybe you're just so angry about the election that you can't let it go. Maybe it's your unforgiveness. You know, you're holding on to bitterness because somebody hurt you. All of those get in the way and of us following Jesus, and there's lots of other things I didn't mention. So I'm just asking you, what is it that you won't let go of to follow Jesus? Jesus is calling you to life. He's calling you to blessing. He's calling you to hope. He's calling you to joy. And the only way you're going to get there is if you say yes to Jesus. So uh, today I'm praying that you decide that loving Jesus is the way to life and you will let go of anything else in your way and you will say yes to your Lord and your Savior. God bless and have a great day.